Hebrews chapter 10, the 35th verse. Amen. Amen. And reads, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Amen. I am ready. 
of 22, we have made it another year through this pandemic. It hasn't been easy, y'all. I can honestly say that I'm grateful for where God has brought me and kept me from. You see, in the pandemic, I was able to keep my job. Grateful. I didn't lose any money. Grateful. I still had a house. I still had a car. I was able to eat. Grateful. I was still able to spend time with God. Grateful. Until <laughs> this summer, God decided to take home my angel, and I wasn't ready. Losing someone that is close to you is hard. My grandma was my rock. <laughs> she was my prayer warrior. She was my heartbeat. And to me, for God to take her away from me at a time like this, I couldn't understand why. And, you know, being a minister, everyone around you expects for you to be the strong one. But sometimes you get tired. Who's going to help you lift your hands up while you're lifting everybody else's up? It's not an easy road. It was a lonely one, and it was a hard one. But I remember crying out to God one Sunday morning because I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to do anything. And I said, God, why? And he said to me, daughter, accept that this is happening, but expect that I will be with you. And I'm grateful every day. The road may not be easy, but I'd rather go through with God than to go through without it. So this day, I am grateful and I am a living testimony that no matter where your heart may lie, the strong do survive because I have a Savior that is on my side every step of the way and I am grateful for that. I pray this testimony helps someone. Next, we'll have a testimony from Minister Mara.
I just let you know real quickly, when you're going through with circumstances and problems, we all got them, whether it be family, this COVID, financial. But I just stopped by to tell you after Christmas when you put all your money out there and, and you're trying to take care of your loved ones and then all of a sudden a circumstance out of nowhere just happens. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to tell you that happened to me on yesterday. Um, at 4.35, my grandson walks in and goes, Mama, we have no water. And right then and there, I'm like, oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? And, oh, I know it's going to be expensive. And sure enough, when the gentleman came out, it was expensive. But one thing I'm here to just sum it up for you, don't get caught up in the circumstance, the problem, and what the cost is. Look to the one who can handle all circumstances. The one who can take control of whatever the situation is and start just praying and calling on the name of Jesus. So I'm here to just tell somebody, don't look at your finances, don't look at the COVID, don't look at your truth. Put your focus on Jesus Christ. Yes. Call on the Lord. He said he's a present help in a time of trouble. Yes. So I'm just here to tell you, I thank God for everything we've been through, went through, and I'm going to continue to keep my focus on Jesus Christ. Here's come 2022, no matter what happens, keep your focus on Jesus Christ. Because the only one that can change or make matters better is Jesus Christ. God bless you all.
God, it is time to go into the Word. I know you have been having a good time till now, but there is a Word from God. A Word. I want you to get ready. Grab your Bible. Grab your instruments. We have already taken you through the praise. And now, let's see what God would speak into your spirit for this new year. This is so important. You're sitting at the precipice. You're sitting at the edge of a miraculous God with a miraculous God who can take you into this year and give you every desire of your heart, all the things you're waiting for, if you just learn to trust Him. And there's a word from God tonight that you put in your spirit that will help you make that leap. If you would go with me to the book of Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. When you have it, you can say amen. In Nehemiah chapter 4, there is a word from God that talks about how God builds and blesses our future. If you have that, you can go with me and start at verse 1. We're going to read down into your hearing. Once you find that passage, we're going to read 10 verses. Come on, I want you to look with me. Look at what God says in Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah is a book we all know about Nehemiah's fight to build the walls, but there are some principles in the book that will help you overcome the pressures of what's happening in 2021. All right? Verse 1, American Standard Version, I'm reading, of Nehemiah. But it came to pass that when Sandal heard that we were building the walls, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish, seeing they are burned? Now Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him, and he said, Even that which they are building, if a fox go up, he shall break down their stone wall. Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn back their reproach upon their own head, and give them up for a spoil in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquities, and let not their sin be blotted out from before them. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall. All the wall was joined together unto half the height thereof. For the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass when Sambai and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Astrodites and Astonites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem went forward and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very raw and they were conspired, all of them together, to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion thereon. But we made our prayer unto our God and we set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, in the middle of all this, the tribe of Judah spoke up and Judah said, the strength of the bearers is too much. Watch this. And he said, the strength of the bearers is too much. It's decayed. And there is much rubbish so that they are, they are not able to build the wall. The strength of the bearers has decayed. And there's too much rubbish so that they're not able to build the wall. One more time, the strength of the bearers has decayed. And there's too much rubbish and they cannot build the wall. Let's pray. Father God, breathe down now new, fresh breath, a fresh anointing for this coming year. Resuscitate a discouraged Servant, build up those who have lost their way. Bring us to a place that we understand you are still in control. Let somebody know that you did not bring them this far to drop them now. Bless them, Lord. Bless me, Lord, to speak only that which you say. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. For as long as the Lord Spirit of God will die, we're going to speak from this thought. Take out the trash and keep on building. Take out the trash, throw out the garbage, and keep on building. Trash, garbage, clutter has built up in your life and you can't keep building. Let's talk about it. All you hear on the news now is coronavirus, Delta, Omicron. There's nothing but bad news and uh, dark forecasts on where we're going. These numbers, these outbreaks, you couple all of this talk about the virus and the walls start closing in on you and then you have on top of that work going to hybrid one day you're working one day you're not working schools we don't know what's going on kids getting sent home because they have been infected and then don't know when to come back what is the quarantine period how do i make sure my child is safe on top of that the economic battles people have to deal with the political unrest don't wake up what these politicians are doing to destroy our world and then you look at all of this and then you add on top of it your health your bills your relationships and man we have a mess people are walking around discouraged depressed not able to recover from the slightest battle slightest pain slightest trouble in their life they're losing their struggles they're walking around can't handle any opposition and finally i see people that are ready to give up and totally feel like they are burned out but one of the best remedies for being depressed and discouraged and burnt out and in opposition and watching all the failure in your life and seeing yourself literally burned out walking around like a heavy weight on you one of the best things is first samuel chapter 6 verse excuse me chapter 30 verse 6 you know the verse but it says and i, and I love this and david was greatly distressed for the people talked of stoning him for the soul of the people was bruised, was hurt, was grieved, because every man for his son, every man for his daughter, the people spake of stoning David. When middle of this, when all this was happening, the verse says, But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Powerful verse. We speak that verse. When we're talking about, it gives us some kind of lift. Soon as we say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. And it is good to go to the Lord. It is the best place to go. Do you know what? David was at a place, he was one of the loneliest, most distressing places in his life. You think your life is bad? David had been kicked out of Israel, hunted by Saul. Then he had gone over to the Philistines, actually called himself fighting with the Philistines, but you know he would go behind them and actually be fighting against them, but he was living with the Philistines, couldn't go back home, had these mighty men, had these people that followed him. They were living in a place called Ziglag. He followed Achish into a battle, and when he got back, watch this, all these people put their hope into David. When he got back, the city was burned, Ziglag was burning. Their people were gone, their wives were gone, their children were gone, their possessions were gone. Many looked around and said, we shouldn't be following him. All of them spoke angry against David. He was all alone. And David sat there at his lowest point. When there was no hope, he still had hope and did not give up. Here's what David said. David went somewhere and encouraged himself in the Lord. Here's what David said. I got to find a way to get to God. Can I talk to somebody? I don't know what kind of depression and discouragement you're going through, but you better find a way to take that to the Lord. Why take it to the Lord? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 says this, Blessed be God, the, blessed be the Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of mercy and the God of all comfort. The reason you go to God is because God has enough comfort to help you get through the situation that you're going in. Did you hear that? Go to God. Somebody say go to God. Put that on your heart right now and understand. I have to go to God because God is the one that has enough comfort to get me through. When you, how come I go to God? He is a restoring God. Restoration. There are so many people. You're listening to me. And God said, what you need is some restoring in joy. Chapter 2, verse 25, he said, I will restore the years. 
at the locust that's eating the canker worm, the palmer worm. He said, I will destroy the caterpillar and all the great army. I will restore the year. God said, I can bring you back what you lost. Somebody ought to get it right there. Right there ought to be an anointing in your house. Right there, you ought to look around wherever you're living. You ought to look around whatever's going on in your life, in your life and you ought to tell yourself, my God can get back what I lost. Some of us have lost a lot, but God God said, I'm a restoring God. Look at the woman at the well. We talk about her all those years. She wasted her life, giving her life, selling herself to all kinds of men. She was anointed, and her anointed was down because she needed restoration. She did not even know what kind of pearl she was, and she sold herself year after year. But finally, she ran into God. And God, you don't even hear anymore what happened to the man that she was living with because God restored her. And when God restored her, he gave her new life, just one drink. He said, if you drink of this water, if you get this divine knowledge, if you understand who I am, God said, one drink and your life will never be the same again. She took a drink and this woman was so restored. Listen to this. I don't know how you go from running around with all those men, not being married, shacking up to be an evangelist, but she went around and whatever change was in her life, it was enough for people to listen because she said, come see a man who taught me everything I ever did. Do you realize that's what happened to us? Maybe we don't know your backstory. You don't know but how many know it is weird and some people that know me before they saw me in the Lord they saying, how in the world is he because God restored me he gave me back my self worth he gave me back my ability to conquer my addictions he gave me back the, the promises that he said he would give me a new life and I started to dream again I believe this woman dreamed again because God is a restoring God just like he did King David when he slept with Bathsheba. You know, David was a man after God's own heart, but God restored him because uh, David said in Psalm 51, he said, renew unto me the right spirit. You know, blot out my transgressions. He said, wash me, pur purge me from my iniquities. He was telling God, I need to be restored. After all David had done, David fell. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about, you can identify that God came when you were not saved, brought you into his kingdom and restored you. We all know that. But I can tell you that God not only restored me before I was saved, have I got a witness? God has restored me since I've been saved. I fell on my walk. I'm the only one, huh? I've done some things I'm not proud of. I've been and said some things I shouldn't have done. Come on, even with all the begging I do with the Lord, there's a whole lot of things that I'm not right. But I thank God He don't leave me down there. Somebody give God glory for not leaving you when you fall but he's the kind of God who knows how to restore. And he restored David. So he restored me since I've been saved. He restored you. Not only does God restore us back, but he gives us stuff. Because Job uh, 42 and 10 says, and Job received double. God gave Job double. That means he gives him his health back and his wealth back and his mind back. Somebody say, you go to God because he's a restoring God. He also is a renewing God. God renews us from the bogged down pressures and the darkness and things that we're going through. One of my favorite psalms is Psalms 103. Follow me in Psalms 103. I can tell the psalmist was in a bad place. Have you ever been there? Sometimes we put on so much phony Christianity that we make people think that we don't have bad days. But where the folk like me that want to be honest and tell somebody, no, there's some times when things are so messed up that I'm crying on the inside. But I believe the psalmist did what we should do because he knew that the only place to get renewal is from God. Listen to Psalms 103. This is the first five verses. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Um, um, it says, make it thee to bring you back from destruction. 
adoption and crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. That fifth verse God gives us, when we start at the top of those verses, God gives us benefits. The psalmist said he restores us, he renews our mind, he, he gives us good things, he gives us health, he takes away our sins, he takes away our iniquities. Then in that fifth verse he said, who satisfies your mouth with good things. That word mouth is actually translated as who satisfies your age with good things so that you are renewed like the eagle. What God is saying, and I know somebody can identify and testify to it. The psalmist is saying, when God gets a hold of you, no matter where you are in life, no matter what's going on, no matter what your age, you don't just live life. God restores you. He renews you so you get to the point that you soar like an eagle. Some of you are just limping along in life. But the psalmist said, from my worst moment, that when I bless God, somebody bless him, that I'm looking for God. In that fifth verse, to satisfy my years, my age, the stuff that I'm saying with good things, so I soar like an eagle. So you can shake a good Christian. You can shake a saint who's been through battle. You can shake a saint who's in the middle of a battle. And when you do, they will start speaking good things. Have I got a witness? If you're understanding how God satisfies you and gives you the strength to go on when bad things happen, don't you dare. your mouth will speak good things no matter what age you are, no matter what pain you're in, no matter what can I tell somebody right now, put it in the chat I'm going to speak good things, tell somebody out there, I got to start speaking good things because God wants my life to soar He is a renewing God, He is a restoring God, a renewing God, He is also a delivering God, Psalms 34 and 10 I believe the verse is, excuse me, many are the afflictions, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all, many. Can I stop somebody from having a pity party? It says, many are the afflictions. That's not what you should be focused on. The reason some of you can't get delivered because you're looking at the afflictions instead of God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Celebrate not your afflictions, but celebrate your deliverances. Can I get you to see that? Most saints that are walking around defeated is because you are so in tune with your afflictions that you forgot about the blessing that God got you out of them before and God will do it now. Can somebody just understand me tonight and know going into 2021, I'm going to celebrate the fact that no matter how many afflictions I get in, God is going to deliver me out of those afflictions. I'm talking to somebody afflicted right now. I dare you to lift your hand and say, God is going to deliver you. I am prophesying in your life. Right here on this Friday night, I'm letting you know God will deliver you out of your affliction. He is a delivering God. And then when you get to that point, you'll know no matter where I am, he's going to deliver me. I remember the prodigal son uh, who has found himself needing deliverance. And God said, I will take you to the place that I heal you and deliver you. He is always there to bring us through and get us out. That brings us to this text. You say, why in the world would a preacher start an introduction about Nehemiah with David? I'm glad you asked. Is this preacher crazy? He don't know what he's doing? No, I do. I wanted to remind you that we've been walking on this little easy road of finding powerful texts, stay with me, and saying them and thinking it's going to help. Mm -hmm. I got you now. But it does not work just to speak it if you don't know how to do it. It's easy to say, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. We've been saying that for years. You know it, I know it, we know it, and yet we're still hurting. Yet look at where your life is. Yet look at how you're still walking around without the promises, without the things, and that's what this text will help us. I wanted to precede what I'm speaking about so you would understand we got to get away from this ease. Yeah, I got to go to God because I wanted you to know David is going to tell us what we should do Go to God. Encourage yourself in the Lord. But
but it's Nehemiah telling us how to do it. He is particularly in this text leading us to what's stopping us from getting the benefits and the anointing of that blessing and that word when we speak. Are you interested? Come on, stay with me. It's that 10th verse of the 4th chapter. Look what he said. He said, the strength, Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burden is decayed and there is much rubbish so they're not able to build. Too much trash in your life. Too much garbage in your life. Trying to live a blessed life while allowing all of this decaying garbage in your spirit, in your mind, in your mouth. You allow all this garbage just sit in your life and you get up every day, I'm saying, and you walk around with a bag full of garbage. You're never going to change in 2022 if you drag that same trash, that same mess into 2021. You need to understand that God wants us to be blessed. So God will let us know that we got to get rid of. Here is the word from the Lord right now. Turn around let somebody know if they're watching this with you. You got to take out the garbage. Then you keep building. Oh, God got a great life waiting on you, but you'll never get to it because you're allowing all this garbage to stay. So I wanted you to know, Nehemiah said, Judah has said that the builders, us, we carry too many burdens. All this trash is decaying you. I'm looking at you now. Man, you got so many gifts, but you're so unhappy. Sister, you got so many things going for you. God has done so much, but look at you. You're not half where you want to be. You got so many promises, so many dreams that you just have bailed out on and don't know why you bailed out on. It's almost like you were walking around like this and then when the burdens came, you hunched over and let the devil just have his way and now you're walking around in 20 and you don't walk in the 22 all paired over and wonder why there's no change. Take out the garbage. Then you can build clearly. Say, Pastor, what is the garbage? I'm going to tell you. Here's the garbage. Quit walking around as a saint of God being, bringing all those disappointments into your life. Yes, you carry too many disappointments. Garbage. You were disappointed about how God is blessing you, what God is allowing in your life. People have disappointed you. You have disappointed yourself. And you walk in after your little New Year's shout and you carry those same disappointments into your life. What God is saying, you got to let go of the disappointments. Trust God. The rest of them don't matter. God said, I, I'm trying to get through to you, but you're still trying to direct me to do what you want instead of trusting me to be God. So you carry around, Lord, you ain't blessing me like I need. This is what I ask God for. But you cover it up by just shouting that everything is okay. But you carry around disappointments. Because somebody say, garbage. Next you carry around all hurts. All hurts are nothing but garbage. Folk hurt you. I'll say it again. They hurt you. Now listen. Read my lips. Can you understand the word coming out of my mouth? So what? You can't let those hurts make you sit home and cry because somebody didn't treat you right. You're going to let the person that did not treat you right mess up your future. you got to take those old hurts, hallelujah, and throw them out the door because you're carrying the garbage of an old hurt into a new life. And that garbage will stink it up. That's why I've seen people in a relationship, and it's a good relationship, it's a new relationship, and that relationship doesn't last because they don't realize they carry the same stench, the same garbage of disappointments. And as soon as this new person does one thing that the old person did, all of a sudden that whole spirit of disappointment, I'm preaching now, go with me, that whole spirit of disappointment rises up, and you got disappointed again, and it leads you to think about all the other disappointments. And saint of God. Somebody say with me, garbage. Not only that, mental and emotional, watch this, breakdowns. All of us, if I can say it right, have moments when we are deciding or trying to maneuver through a spirit of craziness. I don't care who let nobody fool you, there are moments when mentally and emotionally all of us may be looking at you with a smile on the outside, but on the inside, my mind is going a thousand miles a minute, and I'm trying to maneuver through this new mental and emotional situation. It could be for my health, it could be for my children, it could be for my finances, but I'm trying to maneuver through this, and I'm all messed up because I can't. 
can't get through it. Garbage. What am I telling you? It's garbage. It's garbage because you need to get over that. Look, if you got a mental problem, get you some help. You, emotional problems, but you got to fight them because we're human and the devil's going to use those emotional problems to try to stop us from building our life. Garbage. What's next? Failures. You messed up. Oh, this is a big one. I know people that are so uh, uh, down on themselves, have no self-esteem because they've had two or three or four failures and the devil starts speaking in your mind. Your whole life is a failure. And then you are a failure. Garbage. Those failures were done. You failed. Don't carry it with you. Unforgiveness. Garbage. Not only do you walk around with no hurts, you walk around with unforgivenesses and think you can have a new life. Man, I don't have time to go through all the garbage we allow to set in our life. But I'm going to let Nehemiah tell you how to get rid of that garbage. Unforgiveness, your weaknesses, your fears, your anxiety. Take out the garbage, then keep building. Don't you dare go into this new life talking about hallelujah, New Year's time, and you have not decided, I'm going to get rid of my garbage. What's garbage? Let me just give you those again. Just a short list. It could be longer. Disappointments, garbage. Mental and emotional breakdowns, garbage. Failures, garbage. Unforgiveness, garbage. Weakness, fears, anxiety, all garbage. All of us have to wrestle with them, but you can have God. you got to get to the point where you can encourage yourself in the Lord, but you can't do it till you get rid of garbage. You ready for me? Here it is. Look at it. Nehemiah. Children of Israel, I'm going to give you a quick background version because i got to hurry. It's going to be New Year's. The, 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 the children of Israel, after the Babylonians had taken them into captivity, there were people left. The remnant was left still in Jerusalem after they destroyed Jerusalem. Nehemiah, who now was a cupbearer to the king of Persia as one of the, those who were taken away into bondage, he now had a position in the court of Persia. King Artaxerxes was in charge. And Nehemiah asked some of his brethren when they came to see him, how does Jerusalem fare with my brethren who are still left in Jerusalem? And they told him, well, Ezra came back and Zerubbabel came back and they built up the temple, but the walls are still torn down. We need somebody to build the walls up. Oh, I wish I could stop there and just say, walls, somebody, the reason you can't get a blessing, God still has power, but your defenses are broken from the garbage. You, you got too many wine in it. You don't you know, you know, walk around hiding from God instead of doing what God said to do. So the walls Walls need to be built back up. And the Bible says that Nehemiah, when he saw this, he sat down and wept and mourned and prayed. He fasted and prayed. He wept and mourned, fasted and prayed. I could do a message on that. Wept and mourned and fasted and prayed because he had to seek God. Then he made up in his mind what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to Jerusalem, but he waited. He prayed four more months till the time was right. When he went into the king, because you know the cupbearer was also the food taster. He went into the king and God had already touched Artax Percy's heart. And he told him what he wanted to do. Can you give me time to go? And he said, how much time do you need? And he sent him to Jerusalem to help build the walls. He didn't send him empty handed. He sent him with an armed guard. He sent him with material. When he got there, he never let anybody know what was going on. Nehemiah was walking around. Then in chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, Nehemiah said this. The next day, Nehemiah brought the remnant together and rebuilt his calling. Chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. You see the trouble we are in in Jerusalem lies in ruins. He says, it's been burned with fire. Come on, let's rebuild the walls. And the Bible said that the people got a mind to start working and rebuilding. So God had a plan. But here is our first point you need to understand. The first thing, because Nehemiah is going to tell us how, what's going on, how to get rid of that garbage. The first thing you got to know is, where does the garbage come from? Right there in that first verse. But when it came to pass, when Sanballat heard they were building the walls, he was wrong and took great indignation to mock the Jews. You have to always keep in mind you're fighting a battle. This battle is a battle that starts as soon as you pick up and accept your calling. You can't ever let your guard down. You've got to know that this is an eternal battle until the Lord comes back. So you're fighting. All of us fight. And God already gave the victory if you will stand toe to toe and fight the battle. And you've got to know that your enemies are relentless. Sam Ballot and Tobiah, they were regional governors for the Persians in this area. They represented tribes of people that God had put out of the promised land so that the Israelites could come there. So when the Babylonians defeated them and the Jews were sent there defenseless, the Ammonites and the Hornites and all of the Ashkenites, they were all in charge. And when they heard Nehemiah was coming to help, here's the key. The reason you're the one the devil attacking, the reason you got so much garbage is because you want to help the plan of God. You want to help build God. So he's going to try to tear you down. So you got to remember there are three enemies we all battle with. The first one is the world. Think about it. The world around. The 
those Jews were left in a world where they were defenseless. Some of us, the reason we're so depressed is discouraged because the world is telling us they're better than God. We start looking around and the world tells you, don't be like them. We can do what do, don't be like them. And, and the Bible says that Samuel and Tobiah was mocking them. They were rat. Uh, they had anger in them. Because what happens is they're trying to tell you that the world is better. And we get caught up in that stuff. You're broke. And the devil says, look at the world, God. And you walk around and believe the world is better. And for God, that God is better anything the world has. They want you to line up, to stay in line, and be like them. And if you go and look at what the world did, let me, let me put it this way. Um, Holly Berry did an interview with People Magazine, and she told them, Holly Berry, beautiful Holly Berry, uh, you know, the Oscar winner Holly Berry, uh, Holly Berry, the movie star, uh, she told them that when her marriage broke up the day of justice, that she went into the garage got in her car, put a hose where gas was coming into the car, and she was going to sit there until she left here. But the only reason she didn't, she had pictures of her mom finding her slumped over in the car, and she snapped out of it. But with all the money she had, all the worldly pleasure, all the stuff, it didn't help her. Fantasia Marino, the third season winner of American Idol, she talks about being in her closet one day, looking in the mirror. Just not wanting to go on. Women, Fantasia, you're doing shows. You got money. You came out together. You're good. Fantasia said, yeah, but with all that, I wasn't happy. And she said, I just took a whole bottle of pills. And the last one I'm going to tell you about is Ken Griffey Jr. That's right. The Baseball Hall of Fame winner. There was a time in 1992 he talked about life was so tough that he actually, and he gave a number which messed me up when I was looking at his. He actually swallowed 277 aspirins trying to take himself out. Good. Quit letting the world tell you they're better than God when you know only God has brought you this far. So as you're sitting there now, the world's saying, come back, come back, come back. Tell them, no, I already got what's greater. The greater one is God. The second enemy is the devil and his demons. The first said, when they saw that Sam Mountain, that when they saw they were building the walls, the, the word says they were, they were distraught, they were indignation, they wanted to mock the Jews, they were angry that it was happening. Anger, wrath, mockery. That's what the devil uses on you. Anger, wrath, mockery. He starts mocking you in your mind and mocking you about what's going on in your life. He tells you, uh, uh, if you just, you know, you ought to turn around. God's not blessing you. The Bible says he's a thief. John 10, 10. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. But he tells you, no, you, you shouldn't do it. Don't, don't keep being a church person. You got to start being smart like the world. Cheat, steal, do what they do. Don't be no little church girl. Reason you ain't got no man because men want you to get out. You don't want to get nothing out. Then you start listening to the devil and you get it out and you find out you're, you're in a worse state than you were because now you've sold off your your anointing and your life is left in shambles and now you have a relationship piling up behind you and still no joy. We're going to tell you go out, have an affair. Ain't nothing but nothing that it ain't nothing but sex. Go on out and do it. And say, you know, God will forgive you. Go ahead. And then he knows he's tearing down your spirit. So the devil wants you to sit there. Here's what you got to do. Don't let the mocking stop you from standing your ground because somebody will testify there's a blessing if you stand your ground. We're going to let somebody know I'm standing my ground. There was a time I gave in and found myself in a living hell. But when I turned back to God, hallelujah, the Lord not only received me, he blessed me. I said a minute ago uh, about the prodigal son, but can I say it this way? The prodigal son was stuck in the pig pen. You want to talk about somebody being mocked? And the devil came up. Can you imagine what he was saying to him? Good old Jewish boy down there eating that slop. God done for saved you. God done forgave you. God done forsook you. What are you trying to do? He said, you ought to get up and forget God. But here's what he did. He said, I'm going back to my father. You want to know where the blessings always are? Going back to the father. And when you get to God, God will have a blessing already ready and let you back in your place. I don't have time to talk about that, but there's some of us out there who have sinned and God let us right back into the place where we should be. And the third enemy is your flesh. Right here in the text. But this is the predicament the devil didn't know. Yes, there's sin in my flesh. But also in my flesh, when I line my life up with God, don't miss this, then 
and I let what I want to do for God comes forward. You remember the first chapter when I said that Nehemiah sat down and he prayed and he fasted, right? And he was waiting on God. Here is what I'm trying to tell you. When you line your flesh up with God, here's the part the devil don't like. He thinks he can get us in our flesh. But when we line our flesh up with God, it's called accepting our burden. God places a burden of an assignment in your heart. Oh, I just woke somebody up. God places an assignment of a burden in your heart. Honey, why are you sitting there talking about, I need to survive? All you got to do is concentrate on your burden. Look at the text. Nehemiah, Nehemiah got here because he concentrated on his burden and God did miraculous stuff. When you put yourself back in the place where you're blessing God, he lines your life up. That burden is that desire to serve God and to do what he has gifted you to do. And when you get a desire, desire to do what he's given to you to do. Other things fall off. The devil knows as long as your flesh goes to him, you can't do it. But if you turn that flesh around and let your burden bless you, your burden, it makes you a target. But your burden also is what gives you the strength to fight. You know what makes me fight? When I get up and remember how far God has brought me. You know what makes me fight? When I look back over my life and think of the times God carried me. You know what makes me fight? When I think about those nights and days when I should have been gone. Can I get a witness from somebody? But somehow, miraculously, the Lord allowed me to hold on. And so what he understood was, I got power. Even though you're trying to defeat my flesh, when I grab my burden, you cannot. And if you go through the verses, it says that Nehemiah went to the men. And it, it was something because they tried to get a secret plan in about it to attack the Jews. God allowed them to understand that secret plan. And so they came to them in verse 18, I'm excuse me, verse 15, and it says they came to him, and it says when they came to him, it said they told him all they had, we're in verse 6, when they came to him, all we had, and then it said that he knew the plan. God will reveal what your enemy's trying to do. And look what Nehemiah said he did. Nehemiah said, and we set a watch. Last thing I want to tell you about garbage. If you're going to get rid of garbage, we know where the garbage comes from. All that mess we're carrying around, you got to set a watch night and day. Nobody gets away without fighting through the garbage. Next point I want to get, because i got to hurry up. What, what, what does the garbage do when it's in my life? That verse I read you, the main verse of my text. We're almost done with follow. He said, Judah said. That's important. Judah, yeah, Judah said. Why is that important? Judah was the army. They were so they were warriors. They were the army that's supposed to be tough. But after they said a watch, Judah went and knocked the Nehemiah and said, hey, look, there's too much rubbish here, and the strength of the builders has decayed. Judah said, we can't continue to build with all of this stuff. The warriors said, we got to get rid of the garbage before we keep building. Did you catch it? 2021 will not ever, ever, or 2022 will not ever, ever be better than 2021, 2018, 2019 if you don't get rid of that attitude of garbage, that garbage that separates you from doing what God says, the garbage. I like this. He said, I'm not able to build a new life. You won't build a new life if you carry all this mess into it that God said don't carry. What am I talking about? You know, it's bad when I talked earlier about suicide, but your mental and emotional health is really important. That's where the devil works in your mind. And I always tell folks, get you some medication. That's good, but you still need to trust God first. They get the medication. But it's even worse when a believer and a pastor commit suicide because they're lost and they know the power of God. December the 2nd, Pastor David Roman was on trial for molesting two 16-year-old girls. The Bible said they found him in a garage, in the Rutherford County parking garage, where he had killed himself while he was waiting on the jury to deliberate his case. Yet, he went to a place of hopelessness. He was a pastor with all the garbage, all the fears, all the anxiety, all the struggle, just to press out God to the point that he gave Instead of pleading with God to bless him. Garbage will kill you. Listen, uh, 
Elisha found a place where he said, I had enough, God, right after his victory. He got the only one. Elisha said, I had enough. God let him off, fed him, kept him, blessed him. And then what did he do? Send him back to work. Send him back to take his burden, the burden of bringing God's word. And he was able to retain his position and power as a prophet. Man, this is, this is some heavy stuff. And I'm closing right now. Some of the problems in your life is you want to take garbage. The garbage will kill you. Now, don't submit. Keep walking around with all that mess and see if your life changes. And the last point is how to handle the garbage and keep going. The Bible says you got to know what the garbage is. You got to know what happens, what does the garbage do in your life. And the third point is how to handle the garbage. In verse 15, the Bible says when the adversary saw what was going on earlier, around 11, 12, 13, 14, they said, you know, we're going to, you know, they thought we had them. They want to come in and fight. But all of a sudden, Nehemiah took a different tactic. He said, you know what I did? In verse 16, he said, it came to pass. I took half the servants on this side. I gave them a weapon. And I gave half the servants on this side building equipment. So we were continuing to build while we fight. How do you handle garbage? You keep fighting and building at the same time. Yeah, today now, you might have me. I might be oppressed. My mind might be fogged up. I might be sick. I might be down. I might be in trouble. But I'm still fighting. I got the word of the Lord. I got the power of the Lord. I'll keep blessing the Lord. I'll keep saying the Lord's name. I'll keep on trusting God. I won't walk by sight. I won't by faith. I won't let anything deter me. I watch the words come out of my mouth. I'll make sure I bless God. I'll make sure the Lord knows I'm still on his side. I'll never lay down and give up. I'll never think of that any thought. I'll never make myself go to the place where I am forgetting who I am in the Lord. I'll always remember what the Lord said. That I'm a mighty man and woman.
don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. God said, come as you are tonight. Walk into this new year with a new life. Walk into this new year with some new power. Walk into this new year with a new disposition. Knowing that God never made you to be a failure. Everything you need is going to come to pass in 2022. So while your head is down, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Come on, you know God's calling you. Say, Lord God, I thank you for all of the valleys. Thank you. 